No threats to a civilization from exterior, from beyond the walls of the, the city, can ever bring down a civilization that's at the height of its powers. It's never happened in history. Civilizations fall from within. This is what scares me to death. This is what makes me think about those men in Arlington. The collapse that comes from within. So that's what I want to spend the rest of the evening talking to you about, about the real threat to civilization. And it's not from Iran, and it's not from Russia, and it's not from China. It's from within. You know, if you look at history, not American history, not Western history, look at history, deep history, and you look at the path of civilizations in dark ages, you realize that it's very, very much like a heartbeat, that the pattern is virtually identical, virtually identical, a slow and gradual rise to power, competition with other city-states, the competition drives a sense of patriotism and purpose and sacrifice. This increases the power of the civilization. Its mercantile trade spreads all over the world, generates enough wealth to provide an army. The citizens of those republics or those cities believe in them and are ready to die for them. And then the civilization reaches the height of its powers. And when the civilization is at the height of its powers, looking back through the telescope of history, the collapse that happens happens almost overnight. It's virtually a, like a strobe light. It's almost instantaneous. But it's always the same, and it's always from within. Babylon, the rise and fall, was identical to the rise and fall of the Egyptian Empire, which was identical to the rise and fall of Athens and Sparta, which was identical to the rise and fall of Rome, which was identical to the rise and fall of the Ottomans, which was identical to the rise and fall of the Spanish and the French and the British. And now you look at America and the West, and you see that we are in a rather right place, a rather right or overripe place on this cycle of civilization that doesn't scare you at all to because it scares me very, very, very badly. But you have to understand that no one could defeat the Roman Empire at the height of the Roman Empire's power but the Romans. No one can defeat America militarily. No one can defeat the combined powers of the West militarily. No one can defeat them, and we all know it. The rest of the world talks about American militarism and all of these other things, but the world has not seen America really angry since 1945. If Western civilization ever gets fully angry and uses all of its powers, these external threats are over in 48 hours, and we all know it. Civilizations fall from within. And the way to think about this is very simple. The way to think about this is to think of the fact that common citizens, common people like you and me, throughout history, have stood on the walls of these cities and been prepared to defend them with our lives. And every single time, while we man the battlements, some silk-robed son of a bitch comes out of the palace at midnight and opens the doors, and the city falls from within. It's always that way. Always that way. And that's where the real threat is. That's where the real danger is. We have to understand this threat and this danger. We have to make this our mission in life, to understand it, because the civilization is worth protecting. Civilizations rot from the top down. Why? Why? Why do civilizations fall? Why do they become to the height of their powers? Why is it that when they are the least challenged, when they're the most dominant, that's the fatal moment? Why is that? Well, let's take a look at our civilization, because our civilization is something we can relate to, but this has happened throughout all of these previous cycles. It happens because a civilization at the height of its power goes from being exponential to becoming asymptotic. What does that mean? Well, exponential growth in the quality of life is pretty simple to understand. Every year that goes by, the quality of living increases, and as a civilization grows in its powers, the increase accelerates. The changes in the quality of life during the 20th century for Western civilization have, they're simply mind-boggling. They're simply mind-boggling. My grandmother saw Hindenburg in, uh, over in New York City. She saw the Wright brothers, read about them in the newspaper. She lived to see men walk on the moon. That's an exponential growth in the quality of life. But as civilizations begin to reach the height of their powers, this growth rate is unsustainable. And the growth rate not only just starts to level off, it becomes asymptotic. Asymptotic growth means that over time, the increase keeps going, but it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So let's take a look at today's millennial generation, these poor kids that seem so badly lost out there today. They have no faith in themselves and no faith in their civilization. Why? They're given everything. Why are they so full of despair? Well, they're full of despair because they're trapped under the asymptote of prosperity. What does that mean? Well, my grandfather came to the United States from England in 1915, and he was descended from a long line of cotton mill workers. My family is from uh, Milltown, in, called Wigan, in northwestern England, near Lancashire. Before that, they were coal miners. So if my grandfather worked very, very hard for his entire life, he might bring electricity and running water into his house. And his work 
would produce a remarkable improvement in the quality of his life. He had something to be proud of, he had a goal, he had ambition, and he saw the immediate tangible benefits of hard work and discipline. Kids who are entering the job market today have never been hungry one day in their lives. Never been hungry. They've never been in pain for more than the amount of time it takes to get them to the hospital, and that's not very common. They've had 24-hour access to the world's information supplies. They've had 24-hour access to the best entertainment that's ever been provided. This is what they start with. Air conditioning, widescreen TVs, Xboxes, and iPhones. Where do you go from there? Where do you go from there? Two iPhones? Three widescreen TVs? Is it any wonder that as we get trapped in the asymptote of the success of our society, that people feel like they're bored? And that maybe the only thing left of any interest is a little bit of chaos and a little bit of destruction and a little bit of suicide? We have kids cutting themselves because they're so bored. They've got everything. They've got everything. They just slice themselves up with razor blades to feel something. They're trapped under the asymptote, the asymptote of our success. And all of these generations were the same. You know, the British Empire reached its peak, probably, certainly was at its peak during World War I. Britain suffered such catastrophic losses in World War I and World War II. You can't take the best of a generation twice and expect that culture to survive. But right after World War I, during uh, the Oxford Debate Societies, or maybe it was at Eton, I think it was at Oxford, the resolution was, we will not go and fight for king and country. The resolution passed overwhelmingly. This is the cream of British society, saying we're not going to fight for the civilization anymore. It's always the same, right? It's always the same. It's always the same way. We're trapped under the asymptote. asymptote. You know, there's a guy out there who wrote a book called The Great Leap, uh, I think it's not the Great Leap Forward, I actually forget the name of the book, but he has, a, he has a theory called The Upper Limit Problem. And he basically says that human beings have many survival characteristics that have aided us throughout our history, and they confer an evolutionary advantage. And one of those advantages is worry. It makes sense to me, actually, if you have a cave full of proto-humans that are worried, and another cave full of proto-humans that don't have that worry gene, and the worrying humans say, maybe we ought to keep a fire going all night and keep a lookout because there are leopards out there, and the other guys go, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> well, then that tribe becomes dinner, and they don't pass on that lack of worry gene, and the people that do worry enough to survive, survive. So we have to start asking ourselves if this built-in survival strategy of worry and constant, constant anxiety is not being turned against ourselves. You know, an immune system's purpose is to look inside the body, find alien invaders, and destroy them. But when there's not enough dirt in a society, like in these sanitized skyscrapers in New York, allergies are hundreds of times higher among kids who are raised in New York City skyscrapers than they are on kids raised in farms in America today. You know why? Because there's no dirt. Their bodies don't know what dirt is. And so the immune system starts attacking itself. That's what an allergic reaction is when the immune system attacks its own tissues. The West is suffering a vast, enormous allergic reaction to itself because we've eliminated threats. We have an upper limit problem. And so what I'm really trying to do with you tonight is to not only show you how wonderful the society is and why it needs to be protected, but to show you what these immune system responses look like. What do they physically look like out in the world? What do we need to be watching out for and what do we need to understand? So let's talk about why the civilization needs to be defended. First of all, it needs to be defended because it is a, it is a rule of law. Why do people come to the West? Why do they come to Canada? Why do they immigrate to Toronto or to the United States? Why? What are they coming from? Well, they're usually running from either political repression or economic chaos, often both, because they usually go together. What are they seeking? They're seeking law. They're seeking order and law and structure and fairness. These are qualities that our civilization has. These are valuable qualities, and they need to be protected. The idea that the law applies to everyone is what makes Toronto Toronto and not Cairo. There's law here, and the law will be enforced, and the law will be enforced equally among everybody. That's why people want to come here, to come to a system of law and order. It's got nothing to do with social services. It's got to do with law. I grew up in Florida, you know, and I grew up in the beach down there, spent a lot of time on the beach, and in all the years I ever spent in Florida, I never once saw a, a dentist drive down to the beach and take his family, his aged grandmother and his little kids and his daughter and his wife, strap a couple of inner tubes together, mount a lawn chair to it, and set off to sail south 90, degree, 90 miles to Cuba to get the free health care. I never saw that happen once. 
I've been to Guantanamo Bay twice, and flying over the Straits of, of Florida, the 90 miles that separate Cuba and Florida, you realize just how much ocean there is there. Don't you find it interesting? People who say that it's all about the social services, don't you find it interesting that with all of the social services and the universal health care and the universal literacy that they have in Cuba, the people are ready to get their babies and their grandmothers on inner tubes and float 90 miles to come to freedom and law? And don't you find it interesting, I find it very interesting, that this is not my opinion as a conservative, don't you find it interesting that this is actually true? And don't you find it interesting that it's not like it's 60% of the rafts coming this way and 40% going that way, and it's not like it's 80% of the rafts going this way or 20% going that way, it's not like it's 90-10, and it's not like it's 95-5, and it's not like it's 99-1. 100% of the people that risked their lives to cross those 90 miles of shark-infested water, 100% of the thousands of them are coming this way. No one's going that way. Not one person has ever been shot climbing the Berlin Wall to get into East Berlin. Not one. Ever. Why? They have social services there. It's the law. It's the structure. It's the rule of law. This has to be defended. It has to be. Because people are dying to get to it. We take it for granted. It's the underground city I told you about. You have to see it. You have to see it with your eyes. You have to go out every day and understand that when we were coming in here today, uh, the person who's been taking such good care of me, Sean, had a cell phone call. And he took the call, and a policeman came by and rolled down the window. We rolled down the window and said, You're not allowed to speak on the cell phone. The call's an accident. I'm terribly sorry. Off he went. Would have resulted in gunfire in Los Angeles, but here anyway, that's what happened. <laughs> that's the rule of law. So when you see law being enforced in your city and in your country, you should feel a burst of pride. Constantly. You should never forget it. Ever. People die for this. And not just themselves, they don't risk their own lives. Because when I flew over the Straits of Florida going to Cuba and I saw all of that ocean, I said, despite the fact that thousands and thousands and thousands of Cubans have taken that risk to come to America. Thousands of Cubans have been swept out to sea by the Gulf Stream, which runs all the way up to Great Britain, you know, finally. Never seen again. They didn't die a quick death. Grandma died of exposure over three days. Little baby slipped away from the raft and drowned in front of your eyes. Your wife was eaten by a shark. To come to law. We sit here and take this for granted. Don't ever do that again. See the underground structure of your civilization. Understand that people who are as human as you are die for these things. They die for them. How, how awful, how ashamed of ourselves we must be, or should be, anyway, that we don't go and look at what that police officer did today and say, my God, people die for this. Simple thing like this, they die for.